Hey everyone, so a few of you have asked me to make a video covering the modifications on my bike. So uh, let's go through them here. Um, the most obvious one's going to be the big battery here. This is a custom 55 amp hour, 110 continuous discharge uh, amps um, pack. It's uh, 21700 cells, 20S11P configuration. And uh, yeah, it's been a great pack. Um, it's... Um, strapped in here with two velcro heavy duty straps as well as heavy duty zip ties which i've run as tight as i could get them pretty much i put one strap in front of the bms and one's kind of like grabbing a little bit onto the bms but not much uh pressure on it um these are very tight though uh that's actually the only thing securing the battery because i chose not to modify the tray uh, i did not want to cut into the original tray here it was going to be Pretty messy job with a Dremel and there would be metal chips pretty much everywhere so I chose not to do that. Instead I put a one inch piece of old school white styrofoam down there and on top of that there's like uh, the rubber pad and some additional layers of foam and things like that. But um, it's all very compressed so this thing is not moving at all. And I was very careful not to let the pack touch the flanges um, so it's elevated above the flanges. Definitely don't want the pack resting on those flanges um the other modification that was pretty major was um to take those standoffs off of the uh, kelly controller and i put thermal grease on the back i read in the manual that that's actually the recommended installation method and sure enough that dropped the controller temperature significantly additionally i did poke some vent holes in the panels here which is uh also to reduce the temperatures and these are just amazon vents i'll leave a link in the description but they're rv vents uh, or general purpose i guess you could say vents and i did have to dremel them down on the top half to get them to clear everything but they're pretty short they're only an inch uh deep and uh the fins are all you know fully adjustable just like your regular ac would be um, I just leave them open, but yeah, my controller runs at 25 C now even under heavy load So uh, it's made a big difference in those temperatures and I did not have to relocate the controller outside Contrary to some information on the internet. This controller is not waterproof. Uh, it is an inside Controller just look at the manual. You can find it on the internet It'll tell you right there that it needs to be inside an enclosure for water protection. So I chose not to put the controller outside. Oh, um, a lot of people will just knee jerk, do some things on John Angel's blog, like sicko mode and stuff. And I just wanna make sure that, you know, everybody's aware that those settings are pretty like significant and they do change how much the controller is gonna require from the battery. So for example, um, one thing I learned is that the formula for the controller draw is that, um, the controller peaks at 300 amps, so the power setting, or the current setting, sorry, in the uh, AC Ad User app is a percentage of that 300 for peak. Um, so if you take that number, let's say it's 90 or whatever sicko mode is, you're pulling, you know, 270 amps or 280 amps from the controller at that point. So just be mindful that you know if for example my pack maxes out at 110 continuous i had some pretty high settings on there and my pack got up to like 42 degrees celsius which pretty darn hot for for a pack like this and that drops how much uh how many amps it can output so i was having cutting out issues and it ended up being that um i just needed to drop the controller settings a bit so Based on that, um, basically the, the best performance settings that I've found doing a lot of research on uh, Endless Sphere forums where they build custom motorcycles with this controller and stuff and some people explain the formula. So I came up with 80 for current and 40 for uh, battery amps. What that translates to is 300 times 80% is 240 amps peak. And then that times uh, 40, which is what the... Uh, uh, percentage for the battery translates to something like 96 amps and that keeps everything running relatively cool I think I've seen my battery max out at like 32 C at this point Which is reasonable and I do let it cool off after a hard ride before I charge it um, But yeah, that's much more reasonable than getting the battery all the way hot and having cutout issues and all that stuff. So 
Um, based on that, that's, that's the best settings I think I'm gonna get with this. Obviously you can jack it up to like sicko mode if you're only doing short bursts, but I want my bike to be pretty much able to ride indefinitely until the battery wears out without having overheating or current issues or anything like that. So that's why um, this setup is much more, uh, I think, reasonable for what, what we're getting here. Um, so the other thing is I do have a fuse bypass and I did upgrade to the QS8 connector here going to the controller, which is on the other side there, the terminal block. Um, let's see, I also zip tied quite a bit of this stuff to try to make it as least messy as possible. And then when you tuck this in, there's actually a nice little gap of airflow right in the middle there. Uh, I have used some Tessa tape to make like more of a harness here for the cabling. I also wrapped some Tessa tape around the brake line. That's quieted everything up quite a bit. This is a uh, Tomos fender from Treatland which I have drilled one single hole in and cut the flanges off of. And I also drilled a hole into the original Onyx metal brace in there so that I could attach this Tomos plastic fender to the original metal brace. The Tomos fender does come with these flan like sides or flanges or whatever that screw into the original holes. So you could run the Tomos fender just like as is, but it won't be as um, sturdy as this like 12 gauge steel brace that Onyx ships with. And some people say that the brace is overkill, you don't really need it. And I probably agree with that. There are plenty of bikes without a brace here, but um, you know, it's nice to have a nice solid ride. So I figured I'd keep what they've provided. So uh, let's see, vents, battery, fender. These are also from Treatland. These are uh, Pook moped pegs i think so they're like vintage moped pegs which gets rid of your crank uh the you know the big gear that goes there the chain um the chain is just a simple thing to take off because nor you don't even have to take off the back wheel there's a link on the chain the master link you can just pop it apart and then the chain comes off um so it's a real easy install to get rid of those pedals which are fairly useless and sloppy and they, you know, get rid of your chain, you get rid of all that clicking, no more freewheel clicking, so it's a silent bike. Um, let's see, I have attached this cargo box to the rack, uh, that's with four big bolts in there, and there's similar flanges on the inside to hold the plastic to the rack without, um, you know, tearing everything apart. I relocated the turn signals so that they are visible with this cargo box and also the tail light is relocated back there. Uh, I added this cat eye 450 lumen strobe. Uh, this thing's pretty much as bright as an airplane. It's crazy. It's the brightest thing they make. And uh, let's see. Oh, and I do have the DAT throttle, uh, NYC, DAT shop NYC uh, throttle kit. I love this thing. Um, it's the Domino throttle with uh, upgraded switch gear. This is on off, way better than stock. And then here are my modes. So I can be riding and I can just switch modes real easy right here. Um, no accidental anything here. So, and then the mirrors are called double take mirrors. They're um, like supposed to be indestructible and one knob to adjust everything about it, which is kind of cool. It pivots here and here. So it's very adjustable. One other mod I wanted to cover is the hub sinks here that are attached to the motor. Um, these came from uh, Australia. I will leave a link in the description. Um, the other uh, thing that I've done in here is I've injected Staterade into the motor, which is uh, recommended for cooling. And sure enough, that did drop the temperatures of the motor, which is great. Um, that's the hole where uh, I used a 1 16th drill, which is the smallest drill you can use, poked a very tiny hole and then injected it using their very tiny injector. Uh, I only put in seven milliliters, I believe, which is what they recommend for uh, this size motor. Um, also, uh, be very careful with your motor stays. These things have cracked on me. That's the torque plate that connects, goes between the axle here. Um, I had to upgrade these. Uh, Ryan Dean on the 
Onyx uh, Mods group makes these, um, and they are a worthwhile upgrade for the price. Um, they are made out of hardened steel, and they won't come out on, or crack on you. Um, I also used Red Loctite 262 on this. Uh, I was having the bolts were loosening on me using regular blue Loctite. Using Red Loctite has solved that, so now it's nice and um, sturdy. Everything's staying together. No more cracks. Um, so yeah, those upgraded torque plates are essential. Then the Staterade, which is on Amazon for like 25 bucks, and the hub sinks, which unfortunately are a special order, and those did take a while to come from Australia. One other thing I wanted to cover here is the AC Ad User app while we're here. Um, flip the bike on. So I wanted to show you a couple of things that may not be super intuitive. Um, so let's see open and then once it says connected down there and you can hit read here and then it'll pop up now oh, okay so um these are your settings right but what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually monitor your controller in real time if you swipe to the right so if you swipe to the right now you can see your motor temperature, your controller temperature, you can see if your like brake switch is enabled, is, is turned on or not. You can see your throttle position, so you could diagnose if your throttle position, like your, your throttle's messed up or not. Um, hall sensors, it tells you where the motor is at, so it looks like it's in between A and C right now or something like that. Then your battery voltage. Um, so yeah, lots of interesting information. Motor, phase current, motor speed, and RPM. But importantly, you've got your um, error code here. So error status, which would throw a code here. So if you're, you know, having a current issue or temperature issue or whatever, and your mess, your bike messes up, it would tell you right here what's going on, which is very useful. So to get to that, you just swipe right once you're connected to the controller. You could do this while you're riding too, as long as your connection doesn't break to the Bluetooth. Yeah. So I think that wraps it up for mods on the bike i'm sure i'll do more things down the line but for now that's uh pretty much got the thing to where i want it to be and um yeah any questions let me know in the comments and i'll see you on the road